I think I need coffee and I need some water and I look around and I think, oh, I praise the Lord, you know. <laughs> I don't know if I need to do anything. It's beautiful. Sometimes it's a good thing to be still and to know that He is God, but He is here. Have you ever felt that way? Have you ever woke up and just simply said, wow, I didn't know the Lord was here. It's amazing. He must have visited me in the night. He must have watched over me while I slept. He must have kept me protected from all the night terrors and all the things that go on while I'm unprotected. For he causes his beloved to sleep. Wow, I didn't know that God was so caring and so sharing with me that he would hover over me as he gave me his Holy Spirit as he did in creation that hovered over the waters. And he has guided me and abided with me all through the night. Oh Lord, may it be that this day that you would do the same and lead me in the way that I should go. For to thee do I lift up my soul. And you know, you, you hear those words and you sing them or you think about them. But until you discover them as a reality of your life, as a very real, personal, experiential thing, then the scriptures are only scriptures. And though they may have the power of God in them and they go inside you and they're changing you and arranging you and reforming your mind and conforming you into the image of his son, it's just not the practical reality that God wants it to be until you actually become thankful and aware that it is alive in and about you because it's part of your life. The Word is your life. It will be resounding in heaven in the sense that everything will be the Word of God. Everything is the Word of God. For what we have in heaven of our salvation is Jesus. What we go to is Jesus. What we are going to experience is Jesus. It's just all about Him. And the revelation of it is just such an amazing, marvelous experience that that's where we want to go. It's like the center attraction of our eternity. And it's the big concert. <laughs> it's the important thing. But as he is alive in us, he's abiding with us through all of our circumstances, giving to us a knowledge of how he is working in all things that are around us even the noise the patio the trees the plants the air we breathe the sickness in our body or the health all these things god is at work both to do and to will of his good pleasure and all we need to do is recognize that it's jesus and only jesus and always has been and so when you get distracted go back to the beginning and just make it jesus and that alone. Today, in God calling, stones of the way, I am here, no distance separates me. In the spirit kingdom, we measure not by earth's smiles. A false word, a fear-inspired failure, a harsh criticism, these are the distances between a soul and me. Your training must be severe that your work for me be unhindered. You seek my presence, and they who seek it shall find it. It is not a question of human searching so much as human consciousness, unconditional surrender to my will in the small as well as in the big things of life. Recognize my little promptings, my still small voice, my way communicating personally to you. This is this it is that makes my guidance possible. It is how I am real for you. You know the difference between taking a glad, loving, joy-springing child with you along the way. When the child anticipates each direction, accepts naturally each decision as to each turning, and the, and the difference between that child as well as the child who resists and rebellious and has to be forced, dragged along the way, even though in its quieter moments it might say, yeah, I do want to go with you. I cannot be left alone, but I hate this way. It is not the way, but the loving rejoicing in the way and the guidance that matters with my disciples. It's not the purpose of what they are going to accomplish, but the process with which they are enjoying it. 
You are ready for the guidance, but you do not rejoice as you should. You ought to, daily, in those little things, make the time and take the place to rejoice in the Lord always, that in all things you might be that wellspring of living waters pouring forth unto a thirsty soul who has need to hear from the Lord today what you might say as God communicates through you to them. For surely the world is a desperately dry and arid place that seeks the living waters that they may thirst no more. And whether you know it or not, you are the one who is carrying that living water.